Hello everyone, this is Super EV Master and welcome to the 2016 Auto Club 400 at Fontana race review where I recap what went on before the race, during the race, and after the race looking ahead to the next week, giving, uh, mostly talking about um, the major stories that happened during the race. I think that's how I'm going to format these race reviews and then on my blogs that's where I'll, I'll give like, on this lap this happened, on this lap this happened, etc. Um, which by the way, if you haven't read at least one of those, I think you should because I think they give an interesting perspective, just my opinion. Anyway, overall thoughts on the race, favorite race of the season, in my opinion. Um, it just had a little bit of everything, but most importantly, great racing. Fontana once again del delivers when it comes to great r racing, and this seemed very unimaginable five, ten years ago when, Fon when many of us, and I was kind of one of the people, perceived Fontana as the worst track on the Smackdown Series schedule, but now it's the best track. But now it's the best track. Uh, it, it, it shows it shows uh, what good comes out of a old abrasive surface, which is what Fontana has developed over the past uh, few years, and it's led to some of the great racing. And with the new Dolan Downers package, or, the, or in other words, the, the 26 year rules package, it, it just made the race even better. We saw, um, we saw even though Kevin Harwick mostly dominated the event, we, we saw we saw many different drivers lead the race up front, including a couple of times seeing back and forth passing for the lead. Um, that that's something they they certainly don't see every race, uh, but, but 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 it's always great to watch. Um, I personally really enjoyed it, uh, and it wasn't just like it wasn't just like two cars battling for the lead. Sometimes we had like four, five, six cars all battling for the lead. In fact, I think like on the second to last restart. We we had moments where, where, where basically we all had like six where we had like six cars under a blanket and it's just simply um, a joy to watch. If you didn't, if the racing wasn't appealing to you, then I really honestly don't know. I really honestly don't know what to say. NASCAR isn't isn't for you then. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like my, my overall uh, thoughts. On the race and yeah now let's get into what happened before the race just like last week at phoenix not really a whole lot to talk about um but, but i guess there are a few things that we're talking about for example i don't know if if this was news last like like the week before or um heading into Montana, but i i found it anyway and i guess it's worth showing um so i, I read somewhere that penske is looking to build an alliance with Steerhouse Racing for next year when they go to Ford, which makes sense. I think it will help the team still stay uh, pr pretty competitive because I think uh, there are many people who, when, who, who, for the moment, when they first heard this announcement, thought that it was a downgrade for Steerhouse Racing, but hopefully this makes some people uh, change their mind. Uh, and I guess we can get on, on to the weekend. So uh, Austin Dillon grabs the pole, which... Um, is, if this was say uh, like two years ago, it would have would have been like I think like a big surprise. But uh, really, this season it hasn't really been so. Austin Dillon has has had uh, has been one of the most improved drivers compared to where he was a year ago. Um, and he and he was fast in all three private sessions, so um, it was so it wasn't that surprising that he he, he got the pole. Uh, and speaking of private sessions, uh, well, practice was was kind of highlighted by crashes. There were a couple. Of them uh, in practice number two, uh, Kerbush uh, uh, grinds the wall and turns name four, goes to a backup car, and then in the third and final practice, um, Kyle Larson. I don't think he got. I don't think he hit the wall in turn four, but he got very high, uh, out of shape, and Greg Biffle was coming up the track, uh, probably expecting Kyle Larson to be somewhere else. And actually, both of them made contact. Biffle ran. Biffle rammed into the back of, of Kyle Larson. Both of them. What went for spin on turn four, um, and I thought both of them were going to go to a back of car, but I don't think actually any any of them went to a, a back of car. So uh, pretty impressive teamwork to, to get those cars repaired. One of the major topics talked about throughout the entire race was tire problems, and we had a lot of tire problems, especially early on in the race. Now this isn't the first time we've seen many tire problems at Fontana. Remember the race two years ago. Uh, tire problems um, affected lots and lots of drivers. Um, they weren't as bad this year, thankfully, 
but, but there was still sniff on quite a bit. And it didn't matter if you were a, a rookie driver like Chris Buescher or a champion like Kyle Busch. It affected a lot of drivers and really uh, did um, r- ruin uh, some drivers' days. Uh, other drivers were, were able to uh, recover, and it did result into a couple of cautions, most, most notably. Uh, the second caution, Kyle Larson, who was waving pack, cut a left rear tire coming down the back stretch. First hits the outside wall, then goes straight across the racetrack and goes head on into the inside wall. Thank goodness for the same barriers. Kyle, which Kyle, Kyle Larson was able to uh, uh, walk away from, from the crash safe and sound. Um, and there was definitely a, a lot of uh, fans that were talking about it and criticizing Goodyear. In fact, even two Indy car drivers, uh, Jeff, got on board with the conversation, Graham Ray Hall and Marco Andre. So um, I feel like that could that could, that should put it in perspective on on how much of an issue uh, the tires were um, and why were all these tire problems happening. Well, I think some teams were, were aggressive on, on the setups. Um, I don't think it really has much to do with the new low downforce package. Um, Personally, or personally, in my opinion, uh, I think it's just simply teams uh, experimenting with the setups and some of them being aggressive. It could also just, just simply come from drivers uh, pushing those tires to the to the limit on the racetrack. But uh, I don't feel like that it should be like a, a problem um, going going uh, look, look, looking ahead to the rest of the season for uh, Goodyear. That's just my uh, opinion. Pay hey, road penalties were. Also, a major story complaint throughout the entire race. I, I mean, look at this picture that I snapshot on, on J-Ski, and you can see j- just how many they were all happening uh, on pit road, and they affected numerous drivers. Some of them were able to recover. Some of them were, uh, for example, did it, did it handling, um, get, actually actually received two penalties, and you know, was able to get a top five uh, out of it. Others, like Matt Kenseth, Mark Jr., really got uh, screwed. Uh, be, because of their uh, errors on, on uh, pit road. Now, I, now, now many, now many of these penalties that I see right here uh, are uh, um, mistakes by crewmen, but, but there were definitely a couple of uh, of uh, speeding penalties as well. So, um, and this is brought up because I think we had more speed, speed pen, not speed penalties, penalties in general on pit road in this race more than any other race so far this season. Um, and Fontana isn't exactly the kind of track where I would expect the penalties, in just my opinion. One of the major storylines that I'm confident is going to be talked about a lot between Fontana and Martinsville, which is in two weeks from now, is this incident between Casey Kane and Nick Patrick, and it happened at around lap 120. So Casey Kane is a lap down, I think either due to a penalty, like a pit road penalty, or because he had to make it, he had to make it on schedule pit stop. Nagar Patrick was just inside of the top 20 on the lead lap. And Nagar Patrick, coming off turn four, got past Casey Kane on the bottom, and it looked like Casey Kane wanted to get that position back um, at first glance. Um, but then this happened. So... You can see Casey Kane coming down, but it, it's also uh, important to see that Patrick was coming up, uh, and this is just how I see it. Um, if you disagree with me, that's fine. Uh, it's just my it's, this is all just my opinion, and as you can see, Patrick goes hard into the outside wall. Uh, Regan Smith comes close to, to uh, getting collected in that as well. N- now, why would Casey Kane, who is a, who who is a lap down, race? race Dagger Patrick uh, who was on the lead lap like that I honestly don't know I don't know if it was intentional Casey Kane was later called to the hauler because NASCAR wants to know what was going on Casey Kane said that it was an accident but who, but who knows if he's actually telling the truth or not I mean Casey Kane isn't historically a dirty driver um, as opposed to other drivers but <sighs> But it would be interesting to see if there's more, like, uh, backstory to this, like, before this wreck. Um, so it would be interesting to see what, what penalties are given out on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, 
one thing though that I think Patrick is certainly going to be penalized for is this incident right here. She got out of her car because of a fire, and that's okay. Uh, you know, but, but this incident right here, walking towards the, the, the racetrack, I think that's likely going to get her uh, a big fine. Um, but, but like I said, it'll be interesting to see what what the penalties are, not just for this incident, but for, but for other incidents that uh, you could look at yourself um, on Tuesday or Wednesday. And depending on uh, what happens, I might even make a reaction video to it because um, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what penalties are given out. Now let's get to the part where the winner of the race was decided. The final restart over time, Denny Hillman was the leader. He got through the first, Kevin Hardwick alongside him who by far had the best car. But here we go. Green flag is in the air. Logano behind Denny Hamlin doesn't get a great restart um, really at all, uh, and that really hurt Hamlin. And Kevin Harvick easily gets the lead. But underneath Kevin Harvick, it is not a bird. It is not a plane, but it is Jimmy Johnson looking to the inside of Kevin Harvick trying to take the lead uh, away. Uh, coming after number two, they were side by side. It looked like Kevin Harvick might be able to clear off John Johnson right there, but could it? Here comes Jimmy Johnson to the inside. It looked like and Hamlin had, had a big run, but had nowhere to go. And right about here, Johnson get, get, gets to the middle of the corner really good and is able to take the lead. Coming to the white flag lap, I thought Johnson w w would have been a little bit of a sitting duck because his lead might, might have been too big. You could see Kevin Harvick trying to get a draft out during Johnson, but, but it wasn't enough. Kevin Harvick throughout most of the restarts needed a couple more laps than just two laps to get a good restart, and I think that really uh, hurt him. Denny Hillen tries to go to the inside of Kevin Harvick, but can't do anything. And right here, Jimmy Johnson starts pulling away um but, but we have seen it come down to the turn stand four but, but Jonathan's lead was just simply too big a little too late coming through coming through turn stand four and now turn number four jimmy johnson sees the, the, the checker flag for the second time of the season 77 career win beats dale earnhardt and six win at fontana first since february of two, uh, 2010 uh, here's Jimmy Johnson burning down the house in that awesome super, super car, um, and they and they and they even had and they even had Superman capes in Victory Lane. Here are some quick notes, and I think it's better if you just read them yourself. So now I'm, I would like to look ahead to Martinsville, which is going to be in two weeks because next week is Easter Sunday, which makes sense. Uh, but uh, with all of the the incredible action in racing we've seen so far this season, and, uh, I, I really wish that Martinsville was actually next week because Martinsville is likely going to be a, um, a really good race. I mean, Martinsville always delivers when it comes to uh, having action-packed races, uh, and, and and last year, uh, we saw we saw both of that, um, especially in the fall, which uh, I I'm assuming that we're, we're, there's going to be a, a lot of talk about like will Danica like pay back Kane or will look out and Kansas tingle again just like they did last fall like I imagine like seeing headlines like that like throughout the race hopefully you know it's we, we just see some good old short, short track racing the old average package in my opinion isn't really going to make up. A significant difference at Martinsville because you because really regardless of what package Martinsville always puts on um, really really good races it's the least aerosensitive track on the circuit as far as who who, who might do good there well I think well, well Martinsville favors the drivers who are very who are very experienced and, and, and have had success before so I think we can expect um, drivers like Jimmy Johnson, Danny Hamlin, um, up there who, who among active drivers, uh, um, have the most wins at Martinsville. Johnson has eight, Hamlin has five, including the win, uh, uh, almost one year ago. I doubt we're going to see any surprise set at Martinsville because like I said, Martinsville usually, uh, drivers, you need to have a lot of experience 
at Martinsville to really do, do, do well there, in my opinion. It's just that kind of track. Um, but who knows? There, there could be a surprise. We did we, we did have some surprises last year, last year in the fall with like Albendinger uh, leading early on in the race and then late in the race, almost looking like he could get his first oval win. Um, so, so, so who knows? It, it could uh, happen. So I think. So, so like I said earlier, I, I think the two drivers that I, I think you're, you're going to have to have to watch out for are Julian Johnson and Hamlin, you know, especially since they're, they're coming out with good finishes um, this week at, at Fontana. But overall, that's really all I, I have to um, say. So I hope you enjoyed wa- watching this episode. Um, thank you all for watching. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and bye.